Welcome back to the Britannia Coin Company. We're a coin dealer based in Royal Wootton Bassett in the UK. We've been looking at a lot of modern coins recently and I thought we'd switch it up a bit by looking at some older historical coins. So I've spoken to Mark, our in-house numismatic expert, and he's given me five very exciting coins to have a look at from his special store. So let's get into it and see what we find. Ooh. Before we get into the coins though, we need to draw last Friday's giveaway winner. We were giving away a 2022 definitive annual coin set. At the last moment, we've upgraded the prize to a full annual commemorative 2022 annual set. So the prize winner is coming up as you can see. If you are the lucky winner, you can contact me on the email address down in the description. We'll also be doing another giveaway once the channel hits two and a half thousand subscribers, which we're getting very close to, so be sure to hit that subscribe button. Naturally, we will have our chief of security, Kang, validate the winner to make sure the prize is going to the correct winner. Now, back to the video. We start off first with this gold Henry VI Noble. Minted between 1422 and 1461, the obverse or head side of the coin, you can see the king in a ship armed with a sword and shield of arms. He is surrounded by a Latin text, which translates as Henry by grace of God, King of England and France, Lord of Ireland. The reverse or tail side of this coin features an ornate design of a cross and angels and lions. This stunning design is bordered again by Latin text, translating this time as, but Jesus passing through the midst of them went his way. A passage from the Bible, Luke 4.30. This beautiful coin is from Henry VI's first reign and is valued at 5,250 pounds. Henry VI was the only son of Henry V and succeeded to the English throne upon his father's death in 1422. Henry is the youngest monarch to succeed to the throne at the tender age of nine months. So a regency government ruled in his stead until 1437, the most influential member of the regency being his uncle Humphrey, Duke of Gloucester. By the time he assumed the throne himself, the English were losing ground in France and there were serious divisions within his nobles. By 1454, the War of the Roses broke out and by 1460, after the Battle of Northampton, his troops were defeated and the king was captured, ending his reign. Henry was reinstated to the throne in 1470, following the exile of his successor, Edward IV. However, his years in hiding and imprisonment had taken a great toll on the king, and his advisers effectively ruled in his place. By 1471, Edward IV returned and deposed the king less than six months later, and Henry was imprisoned in the Tower of London for a second time and shortly died in prison, ending the life of the last Lancastrian king. So next we're going to move on to a coin from Edward IV's reign, the king that deposed the aforementioned king. The obverse is very similar in design, however the Latin that borders this coin translates as Edward, by the grace of God, King of England and France, Lord of Ireland, naturally not wanting to bear the name of the former king he defeated into exile. We have a similar design again on the reverse with the same Bible verse bordering the coin. Edward IV was the first Yorkist king, initially reigned from 1461 to 1470 before being forced into exile as we've already covered. His triumphant return six months later would see him reign until 1483, although the War of the Roses would rumble on for a few more years after the end of his reign. He maintained his position until his death in 1483, however he became the first sitting monarch since 1066 not to have appointed and planned for his own succession. The resulting turmoil ended with his son Edward ruling under a regency but disappeared under circumstances still unexplained to this day and was succeeded by his uncle Richard III, with whom the blame for his nephew, the then king's disappearance is thought to lie with. We're going back now to the reign of Henry V, which began in 1413. We have here a gold one quarter noble. This would have been minted between 1413 and 1422 during King Henry V's time as monarch. The obverse of this gold coin features a central shield of royal arms, with Lee above, quatrefoils either side, and a mullet below the right quarterfoil. The motif is enclosed within a treasure of arcs with annulets at the cusps, all within a beaded circle. The reverse shows a small list at the center of an ornate cross, 
terminating in lists. The trefoils and lines appear in the terminals. As on the obverse, the design is enclosed within a double treasure of arcs, itself within a beaded circle. The legend translates as, he shall be exalted in glory. This is a superb quality coin of its type and is valued at £3,200. Henry V's reign was short, but he enjoyed outstanding success at the 100 Years' War with France, setting England out as a dominant force in European politics at the time. In 1415, he fought and won the Battle of Agincourt, resulting in him coming close to conquering France entirely. Despite his doing so, he did not live long enough to be crowned King of France due to suffering from heat stroke and dysentery. He died in 1422 to be succeeded by his son Henry VI, the king on the first coin that we looked at, who was then crowned the first English King of France. We're going to hop back even further now, back to the time of Saxons. This coin is a Thrymissa, the two emperors type. Thought to be struck between 655 and 675 AD makes this coin over 1300 years old. The obverse we can see the portrait of a helmeted face and a cross on a stand to his right. The reverse features a figure resembling that of an angel with wings above two faces looking out at us. Thought to be the figure of victory with the two faces being emperors. Hence the name the two emperors type. Now no longer a province of the Roman Empire, a number of Saxon coinage still resembled that of Roman coins. You can see that this coin, although still gold, is rather pale looking. This is due to a shortage of gold across Europe at the time and began to pave the way towards the use of silver pennies. This tiny coin, although small in size, is valued at £7,500 due to its mind-boggling age and scarcity. We're going to finish off now almost a thousand years later under the rule of James I. This coin is a gold laurel minted between 1603 and 1626. The obverse shows the fourth laureate bust of the king facing left with an XX mark of value displayed at his nape. The reverse shows a crowned square-topped shield of royal arms with a Latin legend around which translated reads, I will make them one nation. James I's ascension to the English throne in 1603 united the Scottish and English crowns. The trefoil mint mark to both sides indicate that this coin was struck in the year 1624 at London's Tower Mint. This is the lowest value coin that I'm going to show you today, but it still commands a hefty £1,850. James I of England, or the Sixth of Scotland, ruled Scotland from 1567 and then succeeded Queen Elizabeth as King of England in 1603. He was welcomed by a nervous nation, given a void in monarch which had in the past led to uncertainty, invasion and war. His rule is actually still commemorated on no less than two current circulating £2 coins. The Act of Union commemorating the union of the two nations, which King James's rule paved the way for. And there's also the Guy Fawkes Gunplowder Pot £2 coin, of which King James was the intended target. In 1606, he gave orders for the British flag to be created, which bore the combined crosses of St George and St Andrew. The result was the Union Jack, Jack being a shortening of Jacobus, the Latin version of James. King James died in 1625 and was succeeded by his son Charles I, a king whose rule would bring a pause to the monarchy in the UK, but his coinage is a story for another time. It's amazing to think how much history is held in these five coins, and don't worry, I'm not going to quiz you on all the information that I gave you. If you have enjoyed today's video, do let me know which is your favourite of the five coins that we've had a look at today. We've got a whole range of other hammered coins with a whole range of prices that I'd love to show you going forwards, if that's something you're interested in seeing. You can also keep up to date with the Britannia Coin Company on Facebook and Instagram, where we post lots of pictures of our products, so you can take a look at those. There'll be links down in the in the description for you to see the coins that we've covered today. We're also on TikTok and Twitter. We have our website and you can catch us in store as well. But thank you for your time and I'll see you next time on the Britannia Coin Company.